Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. View filters are an incredibly powerful tool in Studio One, especially in large song productions. So if your song productions are spanning well over 60, 70 tracks, this can be an absolute godsend if you haven't used these already. So let me show you. This is a production that I've done quite a while back and it has like a very typical channel and track count in my case. So that would be well above 43 tracks and it's probably even more mixer channels. Yeah, going up to 52 here. So this is quite a lot, especially when you consider that I can't work on all of these instrument groups at once, right? Usually the way that you progress in a mixing production is that you go section by section or you go instrument group by instrument group and then you try to mix them all together. And then I have less faders to worry about because once the synths sound good by themselves, then I can just collapse this folder and treat it as just one fader, right, instead of mixing all of the relations between the synths again. And um, this is part of a, you know, more reductive mixing approach that some call lazy, I call it efficient, whatever you want to call it. In any case, in this workflow, it's very useful to not see all of these at the same time, right? All of these tracks, because I would first just work on the bass. And once that whole bus group sounds coherent, that's when I collapse the folder and treat it as one instrument as I then move on to the drums and mix that as good as I can, then make sure that drums and bass work together and and that just worked really well for me over the years. So because I don't need to see all of these tracks at the same time, I love that I can go to the track list here in Studio One. You find that uh, when you click on this little hamburger icon at the top of the track list. And then what you're going to find here is a collection or like a miniature view of all of the tracks and you can click and drag down to hide or show as many of them as you want. So that's probably something you're already familiar with. But what I want to talk about today specifically are the track view filters that you find down here. I find these so incredibly useful. Let me show you what they do. So let's just expand this view a tiny bit so that we can see it a bit closer to Together, right? And let's say that I'm just working on my drums currently. Then I could just type drums in here. And now all of the tracks that have nothing to do with the drums are hidden. The reason that you still see the sense folder here is because I have a drums reverb in there that is relevant for the drum bus. Uh, but otherwise, that would be hidden also. So this is quite intelligent, as you can see. And once I'm done with my drums, I can type in bass instead. And now now I'm just seeing the base folder and nothing else. And as soon as I need to see everything, I just delete the text in here and I see the whole production, which can be really a game changer for your workflow, especially when you're having big sound productions and it's already difficult to, you know, have an overview of all of the tracks that are going on at the same time, all of the different instruments. If you have these view filters in place, then everything just becomes a lot more structured. What's also great is that the same feature is available in the mixer console as well. And here you find that same burger icon for the channel list this time instead of the track list. So the channels are what you see here in the mixer console and the tracks are what you have here in the track list. In Studio One, they do not need to be the same thing. That's quite important to point out. If you want to find out why, I'm going to link a video here in the top corner. But anyway, the channel list works the exact same way. So you just click on it and then here where it says filter, you can just type the channels that you currently want to mix. So if I type bass, I only see the failures of the associated bass bus group. Bass bus, that's a fun thing to say, right? And uh, this makes the entire mixing console just look a lot less daunting in my opinion, because suddenly I only have to mix like five or six failures instead of 72 and everything just looks a lot more manageable. And if you want to get even faster with this workflow, then definitely check out the keyboard shortcuts that you can assign for these filters and you find that here in the keyboard shortcuts and just search for filter. You can assign these two commands, filter tracks and channels to any hotkey, mouse button or keyboard key of your choice. In my case, I just went for the buttons that I have available here on my mouse. So now I can just literally click on the side button here on the mouse. It opens up the track list and puts the filter in focus already. So I can just start typing right away. I just type drums 
right? And once I'm done, I hit the same hotkey. I just hit backspace to delete the text and I see the entirety again. Once you start it working like this, there's not really any going back. And hopefully you're going to find this workflow as useful as I do. Thank you so much for watching.